Okay, let's talk about the AEPA. And AEPA stands for Arizona Educator Proficiency Assessments. And the specific assessment we're going to be talking about in this video is the middle and early secondary math assessment. And here is the test code for that, NTNES105. So if you're watching this video, I assume you are preparing for this particular assessment. So that's excellent. Um, obviously, you're looking to be a teacher in Arizona at this middle and early uh, secondary uh, level. So what we're going to be doing in this particular video is looking at a uh, math problem that you should be able to handle uh, pretty well if you're fully prepared for this particular assessment. Uh, so before we get to that, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabla Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years I've constructed uh, many online math courses to actually include an AEPA middle and early secondary math test prep course. I'm going to leave a link to that uh, uh, course in the description of this video, but all my courses that I've constructed, um, you know, I do a lot of research on what's on the, this particular exam, and I basically kind of come up with a custom curriculum to get you prepared. But if I had to give you a description, a general description of the kind of math that you're going to see here, I would say it is like advanced high school level math. So it's more than just basic algebra and geometry. You're going to have to know, you know, some trigonometry and, you know, more advanced level math. And, you know, there's a lot of mathematics that's covered at the high school level. Okay. Especially, let's say you get up to, say, the pre-calculus level. Uh, and we'll take calculus out of the equation, but, you know, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, I mean, that's three years just right there. Um, and then we're not even talking about trigonometry. So it's a lot of math. So even if you took calculus in college or whatnot, you know, calculus is different than what you, the kind of math, you know, you're going to need to really be, um, you know, uh, up to speed on for this particular exam. Okay. Enough for that, and now let's get to our problem here. All right, so what I'd like you to do is, well, first of all, let me just say this much. I'm going to give you the problem, then I'm going to give you a hint. So if you don't want to hear the hint, pause the video, then obviously I'm going to solve the problem. So that's the way I kind of like to do these little videos. So what I'd like you to do is graph this, uh, and I'll just say this, you know, in quotes, graph this. <laughs> it's obviously... An equation, but I don't want to give too much information because I want those of you out there can be like, oh, I recognize what this is. I'm going to go ahead and, you know, graph this. <laughs> uh, so if you know what you're doing, if you kind of get the problem, okay, uh, pause the video and, and, and knock it out real quick. If you need a hint, I'm going to give you a hint now. Okay, so if you don't want to hear the hint, pause the, uh, the video. And then obviously I'm going to solve it or, you know, do this problem here in a second. All right, so here's the hint. So first of all, what are we even looking at? Well, obviously it's an equation, okay? Now, here is one hint. And then this is not the way to do this problem. But anytime you want to graph anything in mathematics, you can basically make yourself a table of values, right? An XY table of values. But in this case, you'd have to construct a huge table. Remember, a table of values is basically an ordered pair. It's going to give you points that are on this uh, particular, you know, equations, right? So you can say like one, two, three. You can just kind of go and plug in a ton of values, see what you come up with, and then basically do like connect the dots, okay? Now, that's one approach, but that's not the correct approach, right? But I just wanted to kind of reiterate this or, you know, stress this then, in any time in mathematics when you're dealing with something, you can always use a table to help you out. And sometimes there are certain, um, you know, relations and functions that are complex. So the only way you kind of see what's going on is to construct a table of values. So that's not, you know, I don't want to minimize using a table of values. But in this particular case, what we're dealing with is a conic section. All right, conic section. And... Uh, hopefully you recognize what this term, conic section. So it sounds like cone section, all right, or sections of cones. So this is a uh, really important, here, let me draw a little cone here. This is a very important uh, math topic. It's, it's generally taught maybe at the Algebra 2, 
it's definitely at the pre-calculus level. But again, it's the kind of math that you're going to have to be familiar with. But if you took a cone and you kind of sliced it in different ways, different ways, you would come up with different shapes. One of the shapes down here is a circle. And if I kind of slice the cone this way, you would come up with an ellipse. And then if I sliced it like this, you would come up with a parabola and then there's hyperbola. So anyways, that's what we're going to be, you know, this is, this problem is relevant to the topic of conic sections. So conic sections, again, you know, or namely are going to be circles, parabolas, ellipses, and hyperbolas. So what is this? Well, this happens to be a circle, okay, a circle. All right, so essentially I'm asking you to graph a circle, okay? Now, what's the basic equation of a circle? Well, x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared is the basic equation of a circle where r is the radius, okay? And here, this circle would be centered at the origin, okay? So if I had x squared plus y squared is equal to three squared, I would have, let's just go ahead and just do this basic problem here to warm up. Here's x and here's y. So this circle is centered at the origin and has a radius of three. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Hopefully I can draw a pretty good circle here. All right, not, not too bad. <laughs> not too good, not too bad. Anyways, so here is my circle with a radius of three. So I could have turned this problem around. I could say, hey, you know, give me the equation of this circle. All right, so you would say, oh, okay, this has a radius of three. I need to put it in this particular uh, uh, format. X squared plus Y squared equals three because the center is at the origin, i.e. zero, zero, okay? All right, so this is real basic stuff, hopefully. Now, you know, again, if you are lost, don't panic, use this as feedback, okay? Be like, oh, okay, I definitely have to brush up on conic sections. And I, in my opinion, well, Circles are kind of uh, one of the easiest conic sections to learn about, uh, but there's a lot more advanced problems that you can do here, okay? When you start getting into hyperbolas, and <laughs> that's you know, it gets even much more involved, I'm sure your memory will serve you well. Be like, oh, yes, I remember all that stuff, asymptotes and, you know, majors and minors. And uh, again, you know, it's a lot of math that you, we kind of have to remember to be fully ready for this exam. All right, so let's get rid of this. Okay, so we just did a basic problem of a circle centered at the origin. Now, in this situation, okay, this is a circle, but it's not centered at the origin. So we need to find what the center is. Okay, so what is the center of this circle? All right, it's some x, y point. Now, the way we need to do that, and I don't want to turn this into a complete full lesson on conic sections and circles, but basically here, these values are going to tell us the particular x, y uh, coordinate where the center is located. So the x value is going to be three, okay? Now why it's that, basically there is a general formula, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Okay, so here you can see that the H, and by the way, the uh, center is going to be at HK. Okay, so you can see that we have three, all right, as my X coordinate for um, its H. Okay, so that's going to be my X coordinate for my center. And then K is going to be negative five, okay, because it's got to be minus, uh, minus five here to fit this format. In other words, it's Y minus K if K is positive five, I, my k value has to be negative five, all right? Let me kind of bring this up here. Again, um, I'm kind of explaining this problem, but if you're not, you know, if you're confused, then, you know, um, again, you have to kind of relearn all of this. I'm gonna, a quick video, a quick, you know, going over one problem is not going to be enough, but hopefully you understand that the center is going to be at three, negative five, and then r squared is 25. So uh, if r squared is equal to 25, r is equal to the square root 
of r squared, right? Which is going to be, in this case, 5. It's really positive or negative 5, but we're dealing with distance. So we'll just take the positive value of the square root of 25, which is going to be 5. And now we can put this all together. So let's go ahead and rewrite our little xy plot. All right, so here's x and here's y. Let's go ahead and plot 3, negative 5. That's the center. All right, so 3. Let me give myself some room. 1, 2, 3, and then negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So right here, this is 3, negative 5. And our radius is going to be 5. Okay, so from here to here is 5. So we can just go 5 out, and we can kind of just sketch a circle. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so here is our circle. Again, well, it was an average sketch. <laughs> okay, so here is my radius. It's 5, 5 this way. Okay, and here is the center, uh, 3, negative 5. So, again, not, not a perfect sketch, but, you know, uh, hopefully effective enough to demonstrate what's going on here. Okay, so... Uh, probably a kind of problem that you may encounter is they might give you, you, know, so you might see a problem without, you know, having you, you may not actually have to sketch the uh, equation, but they very well could give you the sketch uh, and they could say, hey, what is the equation of, of this circle? Okay, and you're going to have to be able to identify that. But conic sections are really, really, really important uh, in math and something you're going to have to be ready for. And, uh, you know, the nature of these exams is uh, you just don't know what topics are going to come up, okay? It could be polynomial division. It could be complex numbers. It could be quadra quadratic equations. It could be systems of equations, matrices, logarithms. And you may not see, you're, you're likely, you know, not going to see every single topic, but you just don't know, okay? You don't know what topic you're going to have to be ready for. So, you know, obviously, you're going to, you know, have to be ready for all of it, and, um, and the smart thing to do is to just fully prepare, immerse, give yourself enough time to do well on this exam because people do fail these exams. Okay, There's many uh, teachers out there who have had to take this, this uh, exam you know, two, three times, Okay, maybe even more. Right? So you know, not all teachers pass certification exams the first time out. And even if you, you study well, you know, it's a lot of math to cover. So um, anyways, the only way you're really going to build your math skills up is one at a time. Uh, and just complete immersion. So that's the whole point of a video like this is just to help, you know, give you some feedback and uh, kind of give you a sense of where you may be in math. But let's go ahead and wrap up this video. All right, so again, I'm going to leave a link to my AEPA math test prep course for this particular um, AEPA um, exam. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description of this video. Again, all my courses have taken me years to build. Uh, I think you'll be um, pretty happy to, to check out that course, whether you want to use it or not. Um, if you're new to my YouTube channel, I've been on YouTube for several years at the time of this video, more, I think, like 12 years. I already have hundreds of um, videos on my channel that can help you out. So if you like my teaching style, there's a lot of stuff there that you can already kind of use. And I'm posting new stuff all the time, so hopefully you'll consider subscribing. And if you like the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. You know, what's um, your background? Are you uh, go going from high school to college to teaching? Uh, or maybe you're making a career change. Maybe you're retired military. Uh, maybe you were an engineer for 10 years or were in business or whatever the case is. Uh, these days, it's, uh, it's pretty cool because a lot of teachers have come from different walks of life. And this is known, uh, which I think is great because you're bringing all that experience with you. But even if you're coming from um, high school to college to teaching, I think that's awesome too because you know you knew early on uh, that you wanted to uh, to teach, and that's you probably wanted to be a teacher because there was maybe a teacher somewhere along the line that you know had such a positive impact on you that you said, you know what, I want to do this. And the fact that you know, that, you know, at an early age or in college that that's what you wanted to do. That's uh, excellent as well. But whether you're coming from another career or you're coming from, you know, straight from high school, college to teaching, one thing is going to be the same. And that is 
being a teacher, half of it is your professional knowledge, your certification, you know, theory, all that kind of stuff, which is really, really important. But the other half of being a teacher is just experience, learning things that you can't learn from a book, you know, how to deal with kids, how to deal with parents, how to deal with situations, uh, grading, uh, you know, all the things that happen within the school that you're just going to have to develop experience with and uh, give yourself to time to you know, develop that experience. Don't judge yourself early on in your career being like, oh, I'm a terrible teacher or I don't like this. Uh, the more experience you get, the better you, you will, the more you will enjoy teaching. Okay. For sure. So latch on to those veteran teachers that can help you, um, you know, and learn from them, but you don't have to be exactly like them. You learn from a lot of these veteran teachers, you learn what works for you. And then you kind of throw it into a pot and make your own mixture, your own way of teaching. Okay. Um, and that's what makes teaching so cool. You could have two teachers, completely different teaching styles, both effective, and their, uh, students love them, and they, you know, they're both effective. So you don't have to be a copycat of anyone else, okay? But until you've gained enough experience, you know, learn what you can from others, and just don't stop learning. That's another uh, key piece of advice. But anyways, hopefully. Um, this video will help you, you know, uh, double your efforts, get yourself focused on really, you know, studying a lot of math for this particular exam. Uh, definitely wish you all the best in your teaching career. Thank you for your time and have a great day.